Hey everybody, it's Mike Vardy here. Welcome to another episode, webinar, webisode, <laughs> the Productivityist webinar series. It is uh, five minutes to the top of the hour, and we'll be starting at the top of the hour. But I wanted to get in here now and say hello to everybody that's here. And uh, I like to do that before because then we can start to get to know each other a little bit better. You know, um, as a as a time management guy, as a guy who's into time crafting, I like to make sure that you know we're on time. And uh, we don't start at Lombardi time. For those of you who don't know what Lombardi time is, it's Vince Lombardi was a coach for the NFL, Green Bay Packers. And his Lombardi time was always 15 minutes before the actual time that you were supposed to be there. So uh, if it was starting at 10 a.m., let's say Pacific time, 9.45 a.m. is when you're supposed to be here. So it's starting if you are in the Eastern time zone, 12, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, supposed to be there at 12.45. You're all on time that are here, so thanks for joining me. One thing I love about webinars, I can see how does my hair look and all that stuff. So if I, if I look good, you can say so in the in the chat. Otherwise, uh, you don't have to say anything. Remember, if you don't have anything nice, don't say anything at all. But I would like to hear where you're from. For those of you that are already here, uh, I'd love to hear you chime in and say, hey, it's me and I'm from here. Uh, and that way we can acknowledge you. Um, I will be probably repeating a few things as we get into the webinar as we start. Um, this is a very niche webinar. When I say niche or niche, depending on, hey, Nikki. From the UK. Uh, what I mean by that is that uh, you know the the topic, the subject matter that we're going to talk about today is is pretty specific for a, a smaller group of people. So I don't expect to see a ton of people in here today, but the people I do expect to see in here are going to be really into into what we're talking about. So um, so I'm really excited. Uh, I if if you are not able to watch this live, if you're not watching this live, there is a recording. The replay is going to be available, and eventually this will be going up on on an edited version will be going up on uh, on the productivity YouTube page. So so there we have it. Steve from Salt Lake City. How you doing? Um, thanks for joining us today. Uh, Matt will be with me shortly. Uh, we'll fire up the screen and get him on here in a little bit. But I just wanted to kind of go through some ground rules. For those of you that are going to if at any point in time the webinar starts to struggle or you're not you're not you you're the tech tech is starting to fail. Uh, number one, make sure you're watching this on a Chrome browser in your desktop or laptop. Hey, Noah, good to see you. I owe you an email. <laughs> um, and uh, so if you are uh, if you're watching this on Safari or Firefox or Explorer, get out of that, go into Chrome. If you're watching this on your tablet or mobile device, you aren't watching it because you cannot watch a Webinar Ninja uh, live on those devices as of, as of this recording. So... Uh, that's that's one thing you want to keep in mind, and that was to, that was explained in the in the emails and all that stuff. So if there's any issues, uh, I definitely want to you know. And if you have feedback, email me at askmike at productivityist.com. I'd love to hear from you there. Uh, secondly, uh, the way the interface works is the chat. I want to use strictly for just discussion, so you guys can talk to each other. You can talk to you know you can um, that kind of thing. I saw a lot of banter. Hey, Bruce. Uh, that's where the chat, that's where the chat's helpful. If you have a question, there is a question tab. I would like you to put it in the question tab because that way we're not going to lose track of the questions. We are going to do Q and A near the tail end of the webinar. So I want to make sure that we answer those questions accordingly. So by putting them in the Q and A area, the questions area, I'm going to be able to do that. Another thing we've got is a polls area and you can see I've already got one in there. Do you use Asana? And literally the everyone that's responded so far, if you look at the polls area, it's evenly split. 33% have used Asana before, 33% have not. And another said, yeah, I did, but I moved on to another app, which is not uncommon. And we're going to touch on that a little bit during this webinar as well. Uh, if at any point in time, the webinar starts to freeze or whatever, you can refresh your browser and that normally takes care of it. We actually had that happen during a test webinar. Um, I've been using Webinar Ninja for quite a while now. I'm quite... Uh, quite happy with the the offering that they that Omar and his team have put together. And I know they're putting so, something together uh, that's even better, uh, but I can't talk a lot about it right now. But let's put it this way. Um, I'm sticking with Webinar Ninja. I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, Derek, good to see you. And I wonder who GL is. I wonder what G... Oh, me. You're talking about me. I'm a big G Green Lantern fan. So thanks, Derek. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to bring Matt on. Um, we will be, uh, this is a, a webinar. The goal is to uh, give you as much bang for your buck as possible in the next hour. Uh, and that means that we are going to, uh, we are going to do things like uh, go through Matt's actual plan and how he works the plan. So you're going to see some stuff happening, possibly a little fast and furious. Um, if you've never uh, heard Matt speak before or seen Matt before, 
Um, uh, you will you will get what I mean here in a bit. And Matt would be the first one to admit it. Uh, as soon as we get money, he'll probably say, yeah, Mike, you're right. Um, but again, you've got the replay. So if you're not watching this live, you can watch the replay later. And if you are you know, watching it live, you're also going to get the replay as well. So big thanks to everybody for joining in today. Um, I know that you've got your times at premium. So I want to get right to it. It is the top of the hour. Uh, if you have not said hello in the chat, please do. Uh, and again, questions in the bottom corner. We already have one. Don't know what Asana is, so I hope you give a, bit, a tiny bit of an intro. We will be doing that definitely during the, uh, <laughs> during the webinar once we get into things. So appreciate that, Bruce. Um, so, uh, and again, there's the polls there, and there will probably be a little offer at the end as well. So hello from Costa Rica, Mike. Don is here from Columbus, Ohio. Robert from Chagrin Falls, Ohio. It's Chagrin Falls, right? James in Vancouver. James, I haven't talked to you in a while. Good to see you. Um, or at least see your avatar. Um, and uh, right back, I gotta get I gotta get over to Vancouver again soon. Alain from France, thanks for joining me all the way across the pond. Great to see you. Um, I'm gonna bring Matt in now uh, while we while everyone does their introductions. Uh, we have quite a few people here, so I'm really excited. Matt, you should be able to join in at any time now. Uh, I've just given you the invite. Everybody, welcome Matt Giovanisi to the webinar. Matt, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. If everybody can hear Matt, just say so in the chat, okay? I want to make sure that everybody's getting, uh, yep, Nikki so, can hear this. See, we, when we did the test webinar, it was great because I had to run the webinar in the background. And so Matt's like, there's echo. And I'm like, yeah, there is echo. I wonder why there's echo. And, you know, I'm a night owl. So my brain's kind of like not right, quite firing on <laughs> cylinders yet. And so I'm like, oh, it's because I'm, I've got the webinar in another screen. So I'm hearing myself again. Um, <laughs> Don has asked Matt if you're going to be delivering this in web in, in rap format. Um, why don't you explain that a little, like add a little bit of context to that before we dive into things, Matt. Okay. Uh, I have a, I made a rap album last year in 30 days on, uh, being an entrepreneur and I purposely spelled the album. Well, the album's called entrepreneur, uh, and I spelled it wrong on purpose, but no one really got that. Um, <laughs> so it was good. I was I was actually there was, was a video. Uh, there was a video. Yeah. Um, the boss Bruce. I know that um, Matt Matt's uh, a little bit flushed out, but he's going to be doing a lot of stuff on screen. So you're not going to see his uh, beautiful visage for an incredibly yeah. long time. So I have this light here. It's really not doing me any justice because um, I look much better than this. Yeah, in person he's oh, quite quite attractive. Quite attractive. And um, I have, I'm going <laughs> out this beard. Do you know what this beard's for? What is the beer for? Not drinking beer. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So you've done the same thing. When I did the the ninety day no beer, you've done the same thing. I, I have done that. Yeah. So wow. Uh, yeah. How long has it been? It's been uh, about forty five days, but um, I'm currently brewing beer. So. <laughs> 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 uh, what do um, you do? I am going to throw the the link for the boss uh, video up. Uh, from because that's what people want it. They they want. Well, here's it. what you can yeah. do. You can you can go to uh, moneylab.co/rap. Okay. Um, and that will take you to the entire album page. So like on that. Ah, the, there we go. Don yeah. put it in there. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, well, rap. Don't use rap album. Rap album is different. Oh, okay. So just use rap. So remove yeah. that and and do it without that. Now this actually this is a good segue into what we want to talk about anyways because. Um, when we talk about Matt does things very meticulously like that, the, the thing he put together in 30 days and you're, you're a very experimental guy. Money lab, clearly lab tells you a lot about that. You love to do experiments, but when you do something, you go all out and you do a really good job with it. Like there's no question that, that the quality is there. And I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, having protocols and frameworks in place that allow you to be creative and allow you to do what you like. A lot of people struggle with, well, I can't use a productivity tool because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do so much and I'm capturing things. If you start to have this framework in place, then it, you're, you're freeing your mind up to do the work that it's really meant to do. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to get to today with plan your blog, blogging like a boss with Asana. But Bruce asked, what is Asana? And I think that's a great place to start. So why don't yeah. we, and again, if you have questions, drop them in the questions poll, a questions area down below, and I'll close, I'm going to be adding polls as we go through. But Matt, why don't you... I've talked about Asana before, but I'd like to hear your description of what Asana is. 
Yeah, because this what do, what do people call it? People call it a productivity tool, but I do not. I, I think it's that. I think it's much more. Than, I I mean, you could if you wanted to put it into a category, it's mm -hmm. technically a project management tool. That's really technically yes. what. It's not a to do list, but it no. is a to do list. It's I would say <laughs> it's a very advanced to do list. Yeah. Yeah, you know the to-do list on your phone where like I do, I use uh, the to-do list, the reminders app on your iPhone. I use it for like food shopping and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and like, you know, it reminds me to do something every day. I use Asana for the same thing. So I use yeah. Asana to like tell me to weigh myself or tell me to write in a journal or tell me to, uh, what did I say? I used to have like 10 push-ups, and it would just repeat every single day because I basically told myself early on that, I'm going to use one tool to like run my life and it's going to be Asana because Asana is so flexible as a, um, as just a, a you can kind of hack it into to whatever your needs are. Right. It's, Whereas like, yeah, where you look at something like Trello or Todoist or any of these other guys, I'm sure that they can, they can work it in the same fashion, but Asana is much more flexible, which is why people have such a hard time getting into it. Yeah, it's, it, we talked about this before we jumped on the air. There's actually a question here, which I'll address really quickly, where Mike says, is there a benefit? Why use Asana for blogging if you already used to do this? You don't necessarily have to. It's just the difference is, is that Asana scales so well, especially mm -hmm. if you've got a team yeah. or if you, and the, it's, we're not going to touch so much on the boards aspect of Asana today because I know you don't use boards, Matt, but I do. I don't. So, yeah. so Asana has a lot more versatility, but you could, I think the importance here is, if you're going to be blogging or you're going to be doing any kind of creative endeavor and you've got a, a business that you're building, you've got to have some kind of tool to track it and, and put a framework in place. Asana has, I mean, Todoist has labels, Asana has tags. Todoist has projects, so does Asana. Um, yeah. you, so you could use both. Uh, you could use one. I use Todoist for personal task management, stuff that's outside of productivity -ist, but I use Asana for all the productivity -ist stuff because yep. it scales really well. I can add up to eight. I think it's 15 people. It's fifth. I'm still in the old plan where I think it's 15 people before it's it goes. It's five now. So it's scale. It's grandfathered down to five. So you could go to five people uh, on your team and it's free. Okay. Yep. Um, and I think one of the big things, and we talked about this again before we, we jumped on the air, is that Asana really struggled in the mobile space initially. Their mobile app was crap for a long, long time. And uh, that's when apps like Todoist and, and I mean, even ones like OmniFocus, which is another you know, fairly complex app, it's iOS only, but a lot of these were able to jump in because they were in the mobile space. Well, mm -hmm. now Asana looks much better. Um, I've been using it. I have not, I've not stopped using it. I mean, you've been using it for how long? I know you switched back. You said you used other tools as well. Yeah, I've used Trello uh, for our podcast, The Money Matters, back in the day. Um, and I've been using Asana for two plus years now. So like a little over two years. So yeah, um, it's, it's, yeah. And, and I think that, that what we're going to walk through today is if you were an Asana user, it's going to be hugely helpful. And yeah. according to the poll, we have a good 50% of you are Asana users, 40% aren't and 10% are, I was, but I moved away. So maybe the 10% will move back. Maybe the forty percent that aren't will say, "Oh, okay, now I." Because th that's and why don't you jump, share your screen, Matt? Because right. I know you had a there was a Twitter exchange which yeah. I thought was rather rather interesting. So if you want to share your screen and everybody, if uh, I'll be monitoring the chat, so you'll be able to see. Uh, so he's going to blow up his screen a little bit bigger, uh, and you we'll have be to able blow it up, Mike. Uh, I have, right, I have to blow it up. You have to. See, blow that's it up. the thing. I'm the one that has to do that. Blow up the spot, Mike. Blow up the spot. If I can, oh, come on. Ah, hold on. There we go. Okay. Cursor, cursor wars. Okay. Yeah. You can, you can magnify it though from your, your screen. Uh, yes, this one I can. Um, yeah. So. Oh, oh I'm magnetizing the wrong screen here. Okay. There we go. Um, All right. So you're going to, you're going to, so this is a, this is a Twitter exchange. Go ahead and, and, and talk a little bit about oh, that. Oh yeah. This guy, I don't know who he is. Oh wait, I can tell you. Oh, he's the guy, head of design at WeWork, right? So, um. He was like, does Asana come with a manual because it isn't an easy system to use? And a, and a friend of mine, you know, wrote, hey, I, Matt knows a lot about Asana because I have, you know, this course. And he was like, well, it's more of a tongue in cheek uh, about this productivity tool that's hard to use. And he called it productivity kryptonite. And then I, you know, got a little dirty here and he responded with whatever this is. Um, so the reason that I, I, it is a confusing tool, I will admit. 
At first, um, at first blush, for sure. Totally. Here's the thing. When I first started using, or when I, I actually had to sit down and decide to use Asana. So I was hiring my very first freelance writer. It wasn't a full-time writer, just a guy who I was going to pay to write me articles for my website, swimuniversity.com. And I was like, I need to interact with this person and give him, you know, the titles of what to write and manage some sort of editorial calendar. And so what I first did was I looked up how to create an editorial calendar on Google and Asana came, had a, an article about it. And I read that article and I watched a video on how their process was. And I said, okay, Asana seems like a pretty advanced, pretty uh, robust tool. And so I'm going to use that to, to basically run my editorial calendar. And then I'm going to figure out, I had to like say this to myself, I'm going to figure out how to use this for everything. I want to run my entire business in this one tool. So I do things in Asana. I kind of force other parts of my business to work in Asana or I make Asana work for me in those parts. And I'll go over every single one of those. So to answer that question earlier about, do you have to use Asana for just blogging? And we talked about, you know, using it for personal stuff. Well, I also use it as a CRM, a customer relationship manager. So when I do sales for um, advertising on my websites, I, I'll show you how I use it for that. Um, I use it for just an idea place. So like uh, because of the mobile app is so good, I can, if I'm in bed and I'm like, oh, I have this idea for this new project or this new thing that I want to do, I, I put it in Asana. And then I actually, when I actually get on my computer, Asana is always the first thing I check in the morning and go, okay, what's on my list of things I had to do today? And one of the reasons why I like it so much is because it allows you to do repeat tasks. So tasks can be hidden from your view, but repeat every day or every month, or you can get flexible with that. And so I guess we should go. And dive yeah, in. let's just dive right in. I mean, I think that I think we could. I mean, the CRM thing when you showed me that, I was fascinated by that. But let's dive into the actual blogging, like how you set up the framework initially, and, okay. and explain the viewpoint because you've got a bit of a different setup. It's not going to alter how you could do it, but there are two. There's the paid version of Asana and there's the non-paid version. So maybe dive into that a little bit because some yeah. people are, are not, you know, there are some subtle differences. Yeah. So only until recently I've, I'm on the paid version. And the reason I'm on the paid version is because I really liked the new feature of custom fields, which I'll talk about soon. And I really, and I was starting to grow my team. And so I just wanted to pay for it. Plus I also like I kind of love Asana and work and like live by it. So I'm like, I don't mind paying them whatever it was, you know, per month because of all the things. So I used to have, when you first start Asana, and this is a question that I get asked a lot is like, oh, well, should I start a workspace or should I start an organization? Because Asana allows you to create two different things when you first start. And they don't really make it easy for you to switch back and forth. But I started with a workspace. If you have a single website and you're just one blogger, and maybe you wanna put some personal stuff in there, just create a workspace. It's all you have to do. I literally ran four websites with just a workspace and it was totally fine. Now, a workspace is basically, this. see this area over here, um, and if I, if I move my cursor, it gets a little bigger, it's called Teams. Um, with Teams, this is part of an organization. So I can create different groups of people in different teams within my organization. With a workspace, you don't have this. You just have all projects. And I'm gonna jump into one of my teams here, which is my flagship website, swimuniversity.com. And so let's assume that you're in a workspace. The only difference is you just don't have this team dropdown. So everything yeah. would just be here. You would just have, they would have actually, everything you see in this little square would be exactly what you would have in workspaces or work yeah works yeah workspaces and that's what i have i don't have organizations so yep. uh, productivity just exists as a workspace and then i've got a couple others that i belong to i belong to steve dot steve dotto and i share a workspace yeah so we, I actually have you and i share a workspace too yep we share a workspace too yep it's the productivity uh, one yep. yeah i also i think i share a workspace with somebody else but it's not on this one but so what if you're if you're just if you have a workspace and you have multiple websites the way i used to do it is just say I have an email editorial calendar and I have an editorial calendar for Swim University. I would just put the word Swim U in front of it. That's it. So I would call it Swim U editorial calendar, Swim U email calendar. And then I have another site called roastycoffee.com and I would just put roasty email, you know, calendar, roasty, whatever. Um, so super easy. It's like, again, it's 
one and the same. But what you're looking at here is the task that I need to do today. And here's some new tasks that I do in um, a project that I call Ace Media, which is the name of my company. So I have a company called the Ace Media Group, and we own four websites, but you can only see three here. Um, and each website has its own team. So this is the team for Swim University. And I have a team for Roasty, which is much smaller. And then I have a team for Money Lab, which is a little bit bigger. And so let's just, we're just going to focus on Swim University for now, because really Swim University and Roasty have the exact same projects in them, mm -hmm. uh, the same types of projects. So I have, um, which, which by the way, which by the way, man, I'm sure when you created them, you just created project template, like you could copy the project. So it just saves you the time and energy if you want. Yeah, I, and I didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, everything was by hand. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if, if the team is just me, it, it is, it, well, so again, if it's just you, you don't need an organization. Organization allows you to create teams. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Bruce is actually saying this. Um, is he saying if your team is just you, then this sounds a little overkill. I would say no, no, it's Cause not because it, it allows you to scale. If you decide to add more people like a virtual assistant yep. or you want to, or let's say you like, well, you and me, I mean, I added you because we were going to do some stuff together. So I'm like, well, here now yep. this is where we're going to exist, but it's the framework. Well, uh, basically if it was just you, what you're going to go over now, Matt is kind of like the, here's the framework. So whether it's you on your own or you with 20 people, the framework yeah. is still the same. Yeah, but also there's a lot of projects within this um, that are just me. Like all, all of Money Lab is just me. I mean, you see these two people, but these two people really only have to do with one of my projects. The rest of this stuff is all me. So, the, so look, I use Asana as my editorial calendar. And I run my, all my website, Swim University and Roasty and all those sites off of this. I run Money Lab off of Asana. If it's not in Asana, it doesn't get done. That's just my rule and it's how it works. And it's, this is like, I have to journal today. I actually journaled yesterday, but I didn't click the button. So I have to journal today. I also have to contact Looplock. This is me personally. I have to contact Clorox. I have to finish my Gusto account and I have to check my Roasty email account. These are things that I have to do. And I can just go through every day, check these off. And tomorrow the journal thing will reappear in a couple of days to check roasty email account will disappear. And again, I'm not checking my roasty email account, which is a separate email account for my personal one. If it's not here in Asana. Yep. Yep. And I you just kind of have to just, and I think this is part of the, like the thing, like I started off very small and you're going to see all of these projects and all of these teams and all of this, this whole setup and go like, you know, this is a lot this is two and a half years of like me figuring mm. this all out and not even figuring it out, but sort of ba basically committing to it. That's it. Um, so what do you, I mean, Mike, you let me know, cause I kind of go off on tangents yeah. here, but you let me know. Let's what, get into, what, let's get into the actual blogging editorial calendar component thing here. So okay. let's get into, let's get into that because I think that's where the magic, I mean, especially when you've got the tagging and all this stuff, that's where the magic can really be seen because yeah, yeah. So dive into that. All right. So I have this editorial calendar called editorial calendar new and I'll, there's a reason why there's two, but let's just assume this is the new one. So again, if it's not, this is the editorial calendar. This is the list view. And you can see that we're going to launch this article right here called um, how to convert your pool to salt water. And Michelle right now is in charge of it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to publish on May 11. So I'm using the due date as the publish date. I do that. And, I do that as well. Yep. Yep. And I have now, if you're not going to pay for Asana, you can just use tags. So mm -hmm. I have a sponsored tag. So that, this means that this post is sponsored by somebody and it's in the category of pool. Okay. So, down, yeah. so Matt, click on yep. the sponsor tag and show how you can see every sponsored post that you've got. If you clicked on it, if you just clicked on it, it should show you every one of them. Uh, in the no. left hand side, doesn't it? No. Okay. These are these are not. Oh, because they're custom fields. Because they're fields. Yeah. Right. They're if they tags. were tags, though, yes, yep, I could do would. that. If they were, if that was a tag, then yep. what you would do is, if you wanted to list all your sponsored posts, which is what we've done, like for the podcast or anything like that, if it's a mm -hmm. sponsor, I can click on it and I can see every single sponsored, and that allows me to space them out if I want. Yep. I'm like, oh, you know what? I can't have. I don't want to have or. Or, or let me put it this way. I wasn't using it for summits or for JV promotions. 
And I ended up signing, being asked to be part of more summits than I could possibly even imagine being part of this year. Yeah. And next year I now have the, okay, let's look at the summit tag. Oh, there's, right. oh, there, I've got, no, I can't do another summit. So right. tagging is really one of those things that people don't leverage enough of, no matter what they're doing, whether it's blogging, using it for blogging or for any kind of to-do list or task management. But sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. I just wanted to show that there's some real leverage with using those. Yeah. And so the reason I like, if it were just me, I probably wouldn't have these pool and hot tub tags because I know the difference. I'm, you know, I know on the side I've been yeah. in the pool industry for 30 years or whatever. So uh, not 30 years, I am 33. So I'd be three years old when I start. But, you, were, you were swimming by <laughs> yeah, three. Yeah, I was so. swimming. Sure. Uh, so I have these in there mainly just to, as a, as a visual cue, like, oh, we, you probably need more hot tub articles. We only have one, right? So I can just add some more. Um, if it's sponsored, it means that you know a sponsor paid for this post. And if it's a refresh, it means it already exists on our website. And you know, Michelle's gonna go in and you know, refresh that content, add more words, uh, add more graphics, you know, clean it up, make sure it's cool. If it's labeled a standard, right, uh, then it is a brand new post and it's just a standard new post that's gonna go out. And so, then I have one called a uh, product sale, yeah, which is actually more for the email side because I use this. Uh, which we'll, which we'll get to in a second for sure. sure. I want to make a point back to Bruce's point, uh, how this could work for a solo is how many times do you, are you told, like, for example, I'll give you a great example. When I was building the Asana, whenever you're working on an app or writing about an app and the app changes its user, user interface, mm -hmm. or you know that the content needs to be upgrade updated. How often do you just try to keep track of that or put it in somewhere else or by having a tag or a, a custom field, that's called refresh or update or, you know, maybe even um, move to newsletter, like, you know, newsletter refresh, because that's what some people do is they'll take blog posts and then put yep. them in the newsletter for people who, you know, yeah. that way. So having I'll that- I'll show you all that too. Yeah, having that tag there is really invaluable for those moments where you're like, oh, I, you know, um, the pricing just got updated in this, or you know what, I need to update my, my ebook because the links have changed. Just mm -hmm. being able to enter that quickly into Asana and adding that tag to it um, is, is incredibly valuable because then you can just get back to work. Yeah. Uh, so I'll show you in this first one, since this is one that's coming up soon, this is the detail of the task. So again, mm -hmm. it's not just, you know, there's, there's more to this. So we know that Michelle's in charge of it. We know that it's going to uh, publish on May 11th. We know that this is the title. We know it's sponsored. We know it's, a, it's part of the pool theme. And the sponsor is Hayward. And I literally copied, they emailed me yep. like what they wanted to link to. And I just copy and pasted this in the description so that Michelle had, you know, this is what the article should be about. Here's what you want to link to in the article. And then she created two subtasks here. She created write post and she assigned it to Diana who is writing the post. And then she created graphic needed with text and she assigned it to uh, Raz, who is my graphic designer. And he actually completed the task. So you can see if we go into this task, he's, he knows now he's my graphic designer. He's been doing this for two years. He knows what he has to do. And we, and I can actually show you this cause there's some comments in here as well, but he finished it and then uploaded the AI file, the JPEG and the Pinterest image. So now this, this is like a complete thing when she's done, she'll upload, you know, the, she can, you know, add it from Google drive. She can put, you know, whatever she needs right into this task. And then Michelle is the editor in chief. So she knows to go through and, and be like, all right, I need to put this all together. Now, if you're a solopreneur and you're just doing this by yourself, this is just as helpful because I would be in, you know, this would be me. And then I could create subtasks or not for myself. Mm -hmm. But these subtasks, like, it, you know, I may not need to see this main task. I may only need to see these subtasks like, oh, hey, today you have to write, man. That's, you know, and, yeah. today, and like tomorrow <laughs> you have to make a graphic for yourself or like figure out how you're going to do a graphic. And you can time, you know, each subtask has its own due date. Yeah. So that doesn't correspond with the main date. Now, if you look, um, you know, this doesn't really look like an editorial calendar per se because it's a list. But if we look at the calendar view, and this is why I love Asana over Trello is because you get this calendar view. We know that this post is going to publish on the 11th and it's green because it's sponsored. And if yeah. she finishes this and she checks this off, this is going to stay there. So now I actually have a backlog of what our editorial calendar looked like over the past year. And I can go back and say like, oh, we should, 
you know, maybe refresh this article or, hey, we can republish this and sort of like remove it because they're still going to be here, even though they don't appear in this area in the, in the list. So really, when it comes to this, I only use these two, list yeah. and calendar. I don't use progress because I don't really understand it. To be Although Renee, it. Renee loves it. I think progress is helpful for bigger things like you're yeah. going to work on an ebook or you're going to work on a course totally. I think that, but for blog posts, I think the progress can happen in the subtask. Now yeah, I want to throw an ongoing, in, yeah, for an ongoing editorial calendar, it doesn't make sense, but no. for like a complete project where you have a start and finish date, then yes. Yeah. Now I want to throw in a couple quick things. Number one, Trello does have a calendar view, but it is not nearly as, as you would expect, oh, robust does. or flexible as Asana. First off, it's tinier. Secondly, if you look at the calendar view, which I'm sure you can jump to right now, you can change the view if you want. So on the left-hand side, it's got view, and you could say, I want to make sure, like if you, you could change the view to whatever you want. There's like an arrow, a drop down, you could see whatever you want to see, right? Mm -hmm. So there's lots of different things you can do there. Secondly, um, when you are using, so we do it the same way. We have subtasks and all that stuff happens. Everyone has their own subtask. If what the cool thing is, is that you could have a, we have a master template. So if you go back to your list view, Matt, um, we have a, 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 at the very top, all in capitals, it's called master blog post template. And yeah. it lists all of the, like, so write post, share post on buffer, yeah. create image for post. The key is if you're going to do that, don't, put like, don't wrote like, so you make it your master. And then what you want to do is you can copy it. That's where you, that's your starting off point. So you copy the master for your new blog post. Yeah. Don't put dates in it. Don't put, and, and the, the, there's a real problem if you have repeating dates in subtasks and repeating dates in tasks, it can really get mucked up. So what I, what I avoid doing is there's no repeating. That's why I create a separate one, a separate task for every single blog post. Uh, it just because it would muck up all of the subtasks and we've seen it happen before. So I would create a master task for your newsletter for whatever it is that you do regularly, because then you can add things to it. Like, oh, you know what? Like content upgrades. Who thinks about content upgrades initially? Nobody really. Then you can say like, think of content upgrade and you could put that in the, in the master template for this task. You go, oh, you know what for, you know, how to convert your pool to salt water. Uh, I'm going to create a content upgrade called five different types of, um, you know, yeah. uh, I don't know, whatever it is that you could do to do that. Right. So it, 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 you're doing the forward thinking you're getting, every, you're getting in front of it. And that's what a tool like Asana, especially because it's so flexible and so durable and really, and we, and this is like the adage I use for a really good tool. It's as simple as you need it to be, but as powerful as you want it to be or vice versa, simple as you want it to be or as powerful as you need it to be. It can work yeah. both ways. And, and, and in regards to that content upgrade thing, I keep those separated. Mm, so okay. I, will show, I will show you where I keep those because that, to me, that is a different mindset and way of thinking. I don't want to, the editorial calendar is the editorial calendar. Mm -hmm. That's all it does. It's one Perfect. project. Show us your content upgrade one real quick. Um, so I actually have these in, we're, again, we're still in Swim University. Yep. Let's assume, you know, whatever. I have this marketing tab. Right. Where I have uh, recurring tasks, I have goals, I have different ideas that I want to do. So this is create hot tub buyer's guide. That's a content upgrade. Mm. Uh, update the buyer's guide for pool equipment is a content upgrade. Hot tub maintenance calendar is an upgrade. I also so you, have. So you could tag those if you wanted to. I, as well. Yep. I just haven't done it, but it's a, right now this is me just capturing ideas. Yep. Which is right? exactly what you get it out of your head. And then yep. you can look at it and assess it and evaluate it later. I also have this ideas box, which is just even more stuff. Here's our product ideas. These are good marketing ideas <laughs> and these are just marketing ideas. So <laughs> this is what I, and this is something we didn't touch on yet. Yeah. But you notice these like these sections, right? Yeah. Section headers are invaluable. And the way you do those just real quick is yeah, if you I'll type a task, you, you so type it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. A new task and I'm going to say, this is a section and all you have to do is add a colon and oh. it turns it into a section. And then you can drag things in and around them. Yep. Um, what's cool, what, what I like about this Matt, is see, I see, and this is the great thing about a tool that's so versatile, is I see marketing ideas and good marketing ideas, you've done them as sections. You could always do marketing ideas, good, great, good and great as yeah. tags. You could, you could do that if you really wanted to, or custom fields. It, like yeah. you, could, you could say, hey, 
what is this a good one is it so it again it scales and evolves with you as you go and i had to, these are decisions that i make personally of you course. look at this and i'm like i use sections for visualization mm -hmm. and i use these as my goals and i'll get into this a little bit later because i think i want to show my email editorial calendar because that has more to it and i think is is probably a lot more well i'll just show it to you sure so the email editorial calendar for swim university every tuesday we send out an email at 10 a.m eastern standard time that is a newsletter of content based around swimming pools or people taking you know this is going out to pool owners and i have to be very clear about that um so i'm going to look at the calendar view real quick because today is tuesday and we sent out an email today and this was the email we sent out uh it was titled pool opening tips cover storage and staining and here's the subject line we we uh we created a subject line we created a headline you know this is in the email itself and i'm actually going to show you the email so you can see how this all correlates we had it sponsored so here's the sponsor they're called finn they gave us a banner and i uploaded the banner right to the task yep. because i'm not the one who creates this in mailchimp but if i were like you know finn emailed me this ad you know this this banner ad plus their stuff like two weeks ago yeah, i need a place to store that so yep. i would i stored it right here so if it was just me putting this together in mailchimp here it is i just download it and i'm good to go so this what you were talking about earlier of like of um having like a master template we do have one yeah so this is it uh we have an intro we have intro text we have the this week's pool care tip we have main post one two and three and our art of pool care blurb and then there's you know this is where it gets into the comments because michelle and i go back and forth to talk about you know let me know if this she you know lets me look at it let me know if this needs changes. I said, it looks good to me. She says, cool, I'm uploading it to MailChimp on Monday. I'll ping you if I get stuck. And then she didn't, so she completed the task. And, and, you, can, awesome. and you can heart that bad boy if you really want to now. You can say, hey, good job. You completed. Uh, yeah, I did. did. You, you did. See it? Well, no, you, you liked it if she got stuck. You didn't like that she completed All right, fine. She completed <laughs> now, here's, a, here's, again, let's talk about some subtle differences. You go ahead and show the email. Show the email first yeah. if you wanted to do that. Um, actually, while you're getting it ready. So uh, you can also link to Google Drive directly with Asana. So if yes. you don't want to put it in the description, you could do that, which is what we do, right? You, uh, you can also link to Dropbox if you want to store all your images in Dropbox. And, like there's, again, lots of versatility. And I love how you're using, a lot of people use Slack for that communication. And I, we use Slack for communication that lives outside of the tasks that we're actually working on. But if yeah. it's a task, it's going as comments inside of the inside of Asana. We actually have an internal rule for that. So Which is good. Slack, you should have we, that. Yeah. Yeah. We use Slack as well. Slack is when Michelle and I just need to talk strategy. Yep. But if but whenever it has to pertain to this particular email, it's done in comments. Yeah. Or yes. or or is it for anything really? Like if you've got a task in there, should it not happen inside of the task as well? Or do you, do you kind of, is Slack kind of the rule of thumb for you there? Uh, Slack, well, so with, with this, mm -hmm. there's no other team member. It's me and Michelle. Just you and her, okay. It's just me and her. Yeah. Uh, there used to be a third person, but now it's just me and Michelle. And so just because we need to keep things, and she's still getting used to this system, so she still yeah. has to communicate with me because she's only you know been on the team for about a month. Mm -hmm. um, so we're still communicating, but this is probably the communication is probably going to subside a little bit as she gets more comfortable with the of system. Course. And we are the, the two of us are developing this system. We're like kind of figuring this out as we go. And she was the one who actually came up with the idea of, hey, if it has to pertain to this particular email, let's keep it in Asana yeah. so that it doesn't get so we don't like because we talk about emails and blog posts and you know selling sponsorships. And if we were to jumble that all into um, if we, you know, if we, if we jumble that all into a uh, Slack. Yeah. Then, it's disconnected. Yeah. And, it's just disconnected. And, and Slack is great, but it's, I think Slack is good for us. initiating conversation and strategizing, yeah. like you said, but once you're in the weeds, I think this is where it needs to go. And it's funny. You've got people like Jamie masters, who's been using this for a long time. And I mean, I've seen Jamie and when, when she was working with Kendra, Wright, Who's, who's they're no longer working together, but they had, they had it dialed in Natalie Sisson. I mean, she's dialed in with, with this. So, I mean, there's something to be said for having that. Uh, and yeah, Grammarly, Nikki, you're right. It does. It Grammarly integrates with 
a sauna. <laughs> yeah, I paid for that too. <laughs> yeah, but it does. Like that's yeah. the thing. Is that a zap? And there's, I mean, and then there's Zapier integrations. There's all the. Uh, there's so many things you can do. And you know what? I don't just to, just to be clear. Like I don't integrate. You can integrate. No, you you can integrate a sauna with Slack, and I'm like, why? No, I didn't. No, because then yeah. it gets it just gets noisy. But there yep. are some that are helpful. So, yep. I mean, again, you, you can integrate a harvest with Asana if you wanted to, if you wanted to keep track of time for if you're right. working with the team. Uh, this is really helpful for especially remote employees because you can keep, you guys can keep, keep tabs and keep talking to each other. And it, 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 it lives in the place where you're actually doing the work and everything can reside in one place. Now, I want to, um, Matt, I, I want to get to one more thing before. I let you kind of wrap up and, and, and touch on the CRM stuff because I think that's uh, important. Yeah. But there are a lot of people that are always going to say, okay, but what about like Wonderlist just got, like Wonderlist is going away. Microsoft bought it. And, and Trello, Trello was bought by Atlassian and what's going to happen to that? I can tell you that if I was looking at the apps like Todoist, who has said that they're not going to sell, and Asana, who's not going to sell, I can tell you right now that out of those two, I would, uh, I mean, I'm not saying either will, are either planning on selling or there's, or, you know, but I would say Asana is the one that would not over a Todoist. If you had to pick one that was going to be acquired, it would not be Asana. Asana is huge. It's huge. It's run by two of the co-founders of Facebook. Yeah. You know, Dustin Moskovitz and Justin Rosenstein, they are, and I've spent time in the Asana offices. They are, they are, this is their mandate. This is their mission. So, and they keep yeah. making it better. So, um, if you're worried about like, what if I put everything inside of here? And again, the great thing is, is once you have a framework, even if, even if you decide to leave Asana behind, or even if you decide to leave any tool behind, the framework is what fosters the freedom. You could take this framework. If Asana was to go belly up again, stressing, it will not. And you could, you could, um, you could move a lot of it to another tool if you wanted to, but why? Like everything yeah. can happen inside of Asana. So why? And, and, I know there's a question later about why would you use, uh, why you're using Asana for personal as well as, because it's just the learning curve. You spend more time in one tool, as far as I'm concerned, you're going to get better at it as opposed to splitting your focus amongst other ones. But we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. And I also want to add to that and say, like, when I first started, I just used it as an editorial counter between me and one other person. And mm -hmm. I didn't use it for personal stuff and I didn't use it for anything like that. And it was super small. We just had yep. one project and that was it. We started and we worked together in it. I was, I was like, look, Brian, here's where it all happens. And he was like, cool. And I was like, he said to myself, Matt, this is where it all happens. We worked together in Asana and I was like, oh man. And then I added another project and then I added another project, you know, over time. And so now you're seeing like, oh my God, the whole thing's, you know, my whole business is run in, in Asana. It did not start that way. Yeah, you guard when you, if you're a gardener, you start with one plant at a time. You start with one if you you know what I mean, like because then you can cattle garden. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, the good farmers will go. Okay, we focus on this, and then we move on to this one. And you know, we we you know, an orchard would be a good example of that too. Like you you yeah. can you don't have to, and and I think that's the confusing part of a lot of these tools, which is why I'm glad like guys like me and Matt are around, is that you don't have to do everything that the tool can do right out of the box. No. And I, I certainly don't No, um, Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, you got to do one thing at a time, but I'll, I want to show you. Let's specific, do the CRM yeah. thing. And then we're going to get to some questions and we got, we got to, I want to get, get some of that handled. We can do some open Q and a. All right. So like, basically I want to just wrap this part sure. up is here's all the stuff that goes in the email. And this is what email went out today. There's the ad, you know, it links to the proper link that we had in there. And this is what went out today. It's and you could copy and paste this link into Asana now and have it. And that maybe that's the, some yeah. people might do that to tie up the last. And actually, uh, since MailChimp is such an easy share option for some people, that might be a sub task. Hey, share this across. Some people might do that. Some people might not. I'm just saying, again, oh. you've got that flexibility. Yep. So, um, so the, yeah, that's that. It was checked off. And what's nice about it is it's still there. Mm -hmm. So we have it. And we have what's coming up soon. So we have, you know, next, next week we're doing um, this about, this is a totally different one. It's, it's already, we still, we don't have a subject line yet, but we have the intro text written and she's working on this. We have the ad, we're ready to go. And she's been talking back and forth. Actually, she just sent this over to me uh, and I have to check on this. So um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for as far as the editorial calendars are concerned. Again, I live 
on this. This is like, I know what's going on. I can look at this and, and soon, probably next week, we're going to start adding hot tub emails, which will go in Thursday's list. And so it'll, this will look a lot more full, but it's not going to, it's not going to look full. It's not going to look cool. Like, like, you know what I mean? When you first start, you're going to have like one thing. You're going to be like, yep. why the frig am I using Asana? It's like, exactly. well, yeah, yeah. Take your time or lady, take your time. <laughs> you know. Listen, lady, take you your know, time. Equal rights. <laughs> um, so I will show you, yeah, you want to talk about the CRM. Because I don't have a CRM and yeah. I've not used Asana in this regard. So it'd be interesting Most to see how don't. this would play out. Okay. So I chose this because I'm like, hey, I'm already doing my editorial calendar. I'm already using some personal stuff. I need to start selling advertising on Swim University. Let me, let me hack this to figure out how to use this as a CRM, right? And a CRM stands for Customer Relationship Manager. And, or, you know, there's other names for it, I think. But the idea here was I have a, I basically went in when I first started and I just wrote this, you see this thing that says pitch list. Mm -hmm. These are, all of the emails that I've gotten over the years. And I sometimes I just go on the internet and look for, these are potential advertisers. There's a lot, they just keep yeah. going, right? Now I went back and I did, I did this all recently. So I went back and I was like, okay, I created three custom fields. Now I, I, before I had custom fields, I used tags. So just so you know, you can do this without this. In fact, this one has a tag on it, um, which I can actually get rid of, but you have, um, let me just move, move this for a second. You have this tag, which is the sales process. So it's, I have sold, pitched, follow up next year. If they're like, oh, we can't afford it this year. We'll do it next year. Or zombie. Zombie means we keep, we keep trying to contact them and they're not responsive. But then who knows? You, don't, you know, I never get rid of these. I never check these off, right? I just move them around because right. I never know. Um, Unless someone's, we also have a thing called dead, which is like, they emailed us and said, we hate you. We never want you to contact us again. I'd be like, well, okay, you're dead. Um, then we have the sales status. So this is just cold, warm, hot, and repeat. So most, this is mostly in most CRMs, which is like, hey, listen, it's a, is it a cold lead? Meaning you've never talked to them before. Is it a warm lead? Meaning you have talked to them before. Is it a hot lead? Meaning you have a relationship with them. And I could actually probably uh, combine these two because if they're a repeat customer, they're hot. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, but I like to repeat because I'm like, Oh, we, they've advertised with us before. And it allows, you know, if I have somebody else, I have one other person in this group who's helping me out, Alex, and I need him to know that these are repeats and not just hot. So and again, and hot. again, maybe your rule internally is if they're hot for three different advertisements, then they become a repeat. You know, like sure. you can create an internal rule for that if you want. Totally. Uh, and again, I could, I could even remove hot and just call it repeat because yeah. they're always warm unless they buy. Right. Yeah. Um, and so then I have, you know, they're sold. And then I created this theme, this, this third category, because Alex wanted to know what kind of companies they were. So like I, cause I can look at this and go, oh, I know Beluga pool heater is a pool heating company. So they're a pool thing, but this company, Lanza they deal in multiple chemicals for pools and hot tubs. So I created this tag called pool and spa. Mm. And then if they're like a, you know, the big green egg, if you're, are you familiar with the, the Oh yeah. Green? Yeah. I want one. Yeah. So they're <laughs> a backyard item. They're not even related into any of these, but you know, they still would be a good advertiser. They're so not the Walmart one. I want the actual real. No. Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah, the, the really expensive ceramic. <laughs> uh, yes, they're great. But um, so what I do is we go through these and the rule is we are pitching, we have pitched these people. So if they're, they are, if they're not pitched, they're not marked, right? So we've gone through and pitched 20 people. Now we have two different, um, like we just go and pitch them and say like, here's what we're offering. And then if we follow up a week later, so if it's, so this, this guy actually, he did follow up. So now we're going to call it follow up, right? It's still cold because we don't know anything yet. Mm -hmm. But if we start to have a conversation with this guy, right, which we have, we're going to move this guy up into active. So you see that we have, I, have, yep. I have 2017 advertisers. These are the people who are currently advertising with us. So I know they're all at the top. And then these are the ones we're actively having conversation with. They're, we're in like negotiation stage or they've responded and are interested. So this guy is going to go up here because he responded He's interested. We're going to follow up with him soon. And 
I have, I usually go, okay, we send him what we want to send him. So now I'm going to follow up with him on Thursday. Now, do you okay. change that to you? Yeah, you change it to you to follow up with him at this point. Well, right? Alex is still going to follow up. I'm doing okay. this for Alex. But, that, but it's really, honestly, like if you wanted to change it, it's literally clicking on the per, your, your icon yeah. and yep. changing it. Yep. Changing it. Yeah. So here's the thing. This one right, or this one right here, Clorox, right? They mm -hmm. are a repeat customer. They are in the pool and spa industry. Uh, I have emailed them twice. They have gotten back to me. Mm -hmm. And today I have to follow up with them again. Yep. Now, if they, if they get back to me and they're like, Hey Matt, we want to advertise. I'm like, sweet. They're sold. And they yep. get moved up into this top box. Right. Yep. Or I just, I just drag them up and go, okay, you're an advertiser now. Sweet. Right. Um, if they get back to me and they're like, Matt, you know, we just don't have the budget this year. Cool. Next year, they're not inactive anymore. They're back yep. down to the pitch list. Yep. Um, and so the rule in what we have is we want for sales, we want around 10 to 20 active conversations happening. Right now, we only have three, which mm -hmm. is we're underperforming because we're waiting for these people to get back to us. And usually when you first pitch somebody, they don't get back to you right away. No. You have to pitch them. You have to do a follow-up. And in the follow-up is about, you get like a 75% um, response rate, which is insane. So once this starts getting to the follow-up stage, then a lot of these are going to start moving up into the active stage and hopefully into the 2017 advertiser stage. And so these are, I'm calling these stages, uh, even though I do have the sales progress here. So it is not the, like, if you look at this, you're like, this is confusing. Right. But the, you know, and there's CRMs out there that may do this a lot easier and maybe a lot visually stimulating or whatever, but Everything I do is in Asana now, like everything. So to me, this is working for me. And this is working for Alex as well. So I, I just brought on Alex mm -hmm. to help me with this. And he, you know, and he actually works with a CRM at his, at his job. And, and we're looking at this and going, he's like, dude, I never thought that this was possible. And I'm like, of course, yeah, well, I hacked it. I mean, this is, this is not, this is, you can use Asana for anything. Um, and so I look at what Don says. It says, does it tell you timestamp when it was moved to a new category? Sure does. Right over here. Timestamps <laughs> everything. Um, so yeah, and I don't really care because it's mostly like I, I really actually hate these timestamps. I wish I could turn them off because I just want to know, like, look, I'm looking at this Pleco job and I'm like, you know what? I've been following up with these people. And sometimes I go in and like actually write down like I actually go in and comment, you right? Know, which is, uh, hey, you know, I talked to this person. Um, you know, what do I do? So Don writes like it would be helpful to know next year from what date. It, you're right, which is why, yeah, which is why I actually I did this right. So Loop Lock, who I have to talk to today, I they were set to next year, and I changed the date to when I'm going to sell them again. Right. So I think a good time to sell would be like February 6th. Right. So I would say, Hey, next year, February 6th, I'm going to talk to them and I'm just going to move them down in the pitch list. Right. Or maybe I can, you know, and, and you don't even have to drag. I can just leave them here mm -hmm. and you can look at, uh, if we go into here, um, you can, they're inactive right now. I can just go, Hey, I want you in pitch list and it automatically moves it down the pitch list. Yeah. Right. I can move them back up to active. So you don't even have to do the drag and drop stuff. But here's the, here's the good part. If I go into like, this is set for next year, February 6, 2018, and I'm going to contact them and it's set to me, right? I go into my tasks. There it is, right? Or no, where is it? This one, right? Um, I'm just going to drag this into upcoming and I have upcoming closed. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to see it until no. it's the date happens. Yeah. So when the date happens, it pops up here and I'm like, oh, you know what? I have to do, do this today. Yeah. Right. So this is like for, for CRMs, like this is perfect because um, I'm looking at this and saying, hey, look, I actually have to contact Clorox today. You know, I have to contact Looplock today. This is the things that I have to do as a, you know, as a business owner and get these guys sold. So, you know, I, I can't, I can't stress enough, like how well this works for me and how easily I can stay on track. Plus if an advertiser like has questions I, or, or like has concerns, 
I put them in these comments and go back and look at them and go, we need to update our, our sales process because clearly like these companies are not, they're not buying from us because they're saying our prices are too high or like, you know, it becomes almost like a research tool as well. And it gives so, you, it gives you context and it's, and the nice thing about this now, everyone who's watching this live, you're getting a replay. So you can go back and watch this again. Cause there's a yeah. lot to absorb here. And for those of you who are watching the replay, congratulations, just go back and watch it again. But there's yeah. a lot, I mean, this is this. And, and like you said, Matt, you, this did not happen overnight. This was no. like, this is a, you had to sit back and go, what do I want? what do I want to achieve with this? And can Asana achieve this for me? And the but answer also, is yes. Yeah, but also, um, I just started with like 10 people in this list mm -hmm. and was like, and then like started to add things that I was like, oh, you know, I wish I could see this or I wish I had this. And, and as it became, as I started actually pitching people, then it became, oh, I actually need to know this information. So I started to add, you know, the yeah. sales tax or whatever. And I want to show like, I want to give an example to uh, maybe a little deeper of example. Let's say the big green egg. We talked about them um, within this lead. I'll call it. We have the category. They're outdoor cooking. We have the website. We have their emails addresses. We have the contact name. We have the source on where we got it from, you know, so we know that they're advertising in luxury pools magazine and which is like a, you know, not a competitor of ours, but, Hey, if they're advertising in a luxury pool magazine, they would advertise on swim university. Mm -hmm. So we actually, now we have all this information and I, you know, here you can see what I did last year. I sent the cold follow, which is the cold follow up. And then Alex is, you know, pitched marketing email and then followed up with general email. So like these, this should really be followed up, but you can see like we start to, you know, go through this now next year, I can decide to delete all these comments and start fresh or not and go like, Hey, last year they didn't like this. You know, I can say like, Oh, mm. I put a note in there that says, Hey, they weren't really keen on the price. And then I can go back and say like, Oh, what should I pitch them this year and say, Oh, you know, they, they, they were, they're a very price sensitive company. Let me pitch them with, you know, something unique and different. Uh, so it, it really like, and this is, you know, you look at this and it's like, Holy crap, there's a lot of stuff here, but I can show you in money lab. We have this, a similar task. It's not as complicated. No, no. You know, we kept it pretty simple and we have, and, and this will probably change, but like, these are the people that we've connected with. And so these are the people I would go back to and, and talk to. And I don't know. And, and I think it's, I think it's important to note that you don't, I mean, go to your, go to swim university's inbox for a second, or I guess it'd be your entire inbox. Yeah, wouldn't yeah. It? No inbox. Oh, inbox. Because the inbox tells you what's been updated. Yeah. So if something has happened, in that advertising, uh, you know, CRM, like say mm -hmm. Alex added a comment or something, you mm -hmm. could see that there. Oh, I, I definitely see it. So I know Alex is working. Yeah. And, and, and that means you can comment, uh, oh, let me see where. So I think what gets intimidating people is if they're looking at that advertising project, they're like, holy smokes, like <laughs> there's a lot here. You yeah. only need to really look at your tasks and then you might want to check your inbox to see what other people are doing. And you can actually, what's really cool, if again, and this is if you have a team, you can make a person a favorite and you could see their tasks if you yes, wanted to. I can go into Michelle's stuff and I can see this is everything she's working on right yeah. now. And you could view it in whatever way you want. You could say yeah. view incomplete tasks, like calendar. right there where it said you can do the calendar view. So it's really robust. And, and Matt, I want to get to the part where we start answering some Q&A because we only okay. got about seven minutes left. Um, so you can stop sharing your screen now and we'll get oh. back on the... Um, there we go. His beautiful mug back on the screen. Uh, so let's answer some questions and I'm going to throw, while we're answering some questions, I'm going to throw open Asana for bloggers, which is your, your course, your 12 video course. If you felt, I remember I told you before we went on, like Matt is, <laughs> Matt's going to talk fast, fast and furious. But I think there's, I mean, there's just a lot of, of great information there. Um, mm -hmm. I'll get you to talk about the course really quickly. And then I want to get some questions and Nikki. Um, yeah. The waiting on feature again, we didn't even get a chance to touch on that. Yeah, um, I, I don't use it. I, I use it. I love it because um, th the person I need to use it more with is my wife. Cause she does all the billing and stuff, but uh, I'm slowly indoctrinating her into Asana. Um, she likes to use email and Slack, which it was hard to get her into Slack in the first place. I want to get her into Asana full on because we're getting busier. And as you get busier, a tool yeah. like Asana is definitely going to be helpful. So Matt, talk a little bit about Asana for bloggers. And of course, if you go to the offers tab, you can pick it up and it's like, yeah, a, yeah. so go ahead. 
Asana for Bloggers is a video course that I made. Um, it's a, I think it has like 15 lessons. They're pretty long. It's about three hours worth of content. And if you had a hard time seeing my screen on this webinar, I do something a little different in the course where I actually do animations where I zoom in on different parts. So when I'm explaining it, it makes sense. Um, and you can see it up close. I talk a lot about the editorial process. I talk a lot about the CRM stuff. And I know a lot of people, I mean, I have what, 16, 1700 people have taken Asana for bloggers, um, which is awesome. And the, I get feedback all the time. And the feedback that I get uh, the most is they love, I have two videos at the end. One shows my process on how to use some university and one shows my process on how I use it for roastycoffee.com. Those are like a half hour to an hour long, I think on their, on their own. And they said that, that that was like, that was worth all the money. And when I say all the money, we're talking about $25. It's, it's like, I, it's, yeah, it's a master class for blogging with Asana. And it, what I love is yeah. that it, we, I did do better with Asana with Justin Roberts, but it was an overview of Asana, which mm -hmm. you can get on the guide. Like Asana now has a guide yeah, on the totally. website, but this is specific to, it, it's always helpful to watch someone else's processes. Like we, like uh, most popular blog posts, most popular things that there is like, how does so-and-so do this? Like mm -hmm. life hacker, how, how Michael Hyatt works. And, and, you know, like here's the five email step process that I use. And yeah. It, so when you see somebody putting something together, like, especially for 25 bucks, I mean, it's, it's, it, to me, it's a no brainer, especially considering how much time you could save. And again, the tool Asana is free. The pricing for Asana, and let me see if I can, um, the pricing for Asana is actually pretty reasonable. And I'll get that into the, uh, into the, into the chat here in a little bit, but I want to answer some questions before we wrap up. We only got a few. Yeah, minutes, and I'll so. tell you that when I did Asana for bloggers, there it's for free. So the, the Asana for bloggers course is, is for if you have a free version of Asana. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah. So that, that's very helpful. And here, if you decide that you want to upgrade, this is where this is where you can go. So Asana for that's where you can see all the pricing. All right, let's start going through these questions. So okay, um, we have uh, Noah's asked a couple questions, so I'll hit the, both these up. I'm a solopreneur who manages several clients. Could I have different users on each project, aka client? Is there a user limit for the free version? Uh, it is fifteen still. Oh. All it right. is 15, um, but you cannot have permissions. So what I would right. do is I would create probably, um, you could do it in one workspace where they could be part of a project, like just have them follow that project and just you know be mindful about what you put in there. Or you could create an entirely different workspace where you work with just the team members that you're, that you're working with. And you could actually create um, then what I would do is I would mark those people as favorites. So see what so-and-so is working on, see what so-and-so is working on. But I would create that as a set, almost as a separate workspace. The challenge with that, which is what you don't have with an organization is you can't move tasks from one workspace to another. In organization you can, but not in workspaces. So you have to decide, do I want to pony up the dough and have everything in one place? Or am I okay with having, you know, um, you know, public stuff. And, and the other workaround, Noah, honestly, is to make the stuff you only want to see private to yourself and then make pr right. public projects to everybody else. And it doesn't matter whether the freelancers see it or not. Any, any other thoughts on that? Matt? Well, and e each client could be a different Asana workspace. It's true. It's true. And that's so a like, lot of, that's a lot of workspaces though. It's a lot of workspaces, which means you have to jump around with a drop down list to go to each one, but it completely separates them. So like, if you have a, like I have a, uh, I don't have a client, but like a friend of mine does uh, wilderness survival skills training. And so we share an Asana workstation or work, uh, workspace. And it's like, well, he has, he has no reason to see anything I do on my stuff. And I really have no reason to like see everything he does on his stuff. And so like, if I need to go, he's a, if I pretended he was a client of mine, he would have his own workspace. Mm -hmm. He would be using Asana and I am invited so I could jump in. Yeah. And That's what Dotto's done with me as well. Now, the other thing, um, and I, I was trying to, I had it in my head and I think it went away really quickly, but you could, oh, here's what I would do. If you're going to do that, create, use the personal project space in Asana that you get by default yeah. and create tasks in there to say, check workspace A, check workspace B, like right. how Matt's using it for this regular stuff like journaling and that. Because you will forget one day to check a workspace if you have 
10 of them for 10 different clients. So yeah. again, that's a workaround if you don't want to pay for the organization. You know, and, and again, every single part of this works. Like every single There's, thing we just talked about works. You just have to, it's, that's, that's why people get so frustrated with Asana yeah. because they're like, oh, but which one? I'm like, sit down quietly yeah. in a room by yourself and figure it out. So, so we've talked about this and Matt, you know my, my adage, uh, I'm, I'm big on personal productivity, intention plus attention. Asana is a perfect tool for that, but you're right. You have to sit back and go, okay, what are my intentions? Well, I want to have 10 clients. Okay, well, how do I make sure that I pay attention to that? Well, I should create, Asana gives you the capability to handle that. So, yeah. it, but, it's, yeah. but it's personal. It's completely personal. And that's the great thing is that how I've, I've got your, I've got Asana, blog, um, Asana for blogging and I, I mean, I, I love it, but there's, I don't use every part of it, no. you know? I can tell you right now, I'm probably going to go back to lists though from boards because I like being able to see it in that the boards tend to, I can't complete it. That's the problem I have. We talked about that off the top, but if you like boards, you can do that. Right. So, and it's maybe Trello too. So it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah well, it was Asana and Trello. It's like, it's all and Slack. It's they're all, all there. They're all there. All um, one, yeah. Noah, in terms of capture, um, I use a tool called there's on, on iOS called input. It's a, it's a free and it links up to my main Asana account. So if I want to quickly capture something and not see anything in Asana, I could use that for that drafts for iOS also works for that, but they're both all of all of the tools like Evernote. Um, Evernote has a lot more robust capture because it can capture images and stuff like that. Asana is more for capturing text. You know, um, you don't really ca You can attach things to it if you want. It's beginning. I mean, the mobile version of Asana is still, it's great much better than it was, but I mean, you're not going to get the features of Todoist mobile app are still better. Like the, the geo, the, the geo location, all that stuff. Um, but Asana will continue to work on that. Uh, I have a thought. Go ahead. Stop capturing stuff. That's if you're, uh, if you're, if you're, if you're <laughs> out there capturing nonstop, then you're not doing anything. <clears throat> that's, that's a, that's a valid point. I love the idea of if you're, if, if you're, <laughs> If you're not in the habit of capturing right now, you should be. It, but then you got you should probably evaluate. Okay, how many things have I captured that are just sitting there, right? That aren't that aren't I, executed. I stopped using Evernote. I don't like their business model. I didn't like what they were what they stood for anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't have a note taking system. I do. It's just it's just in Asana. No. Oh, it's this. It's in a piece of paper. It's a notebook. Yeah. 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 And you know what? This is garbage. It's just freaking this scratch pad. It's yeah. nothing, right? So. The thing is, is like, if I get a, if I see a blog post and it's about like SEO or something and I'm like, Ooh, this is really good. I want to capture this. I bookmark it. Yeah. Old school bookmarks. I have a, and my, and I, and I clean them up. So like, if I, if I've done something and I'm like, Oh, I feel like I understand whatever this blog post was talking about. I, I delete it. It goes away. I don't save it for the rest of my life because when I go back to it, they're probably going to, it's probably changed and you know, I've done all kinds of stuff, but I just, you know, I used Evernote for so long and I dislike it so much because you can't interact with other people in real time. It doesn't have, um, it, 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 it does have a work chat, but it's, it's, it's not, it's trying to be too much to, I mean, again, it's trying to be everything to everyone and it's not good for to-do lists. I, I would know no, it's people try to shoehorn it. Um, I think that Evernote's got, got a place, but I want to get to the rest of these questions though. Yeah. So let's, 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 and I, it's my little, like, so I'm on a soapbox right now. <laughs> I'll jump off. All right. So, uh, uh, Carlos asked, why are you using ACE media as a workspace and a tag? Oh, um, good question. ACE media is a sort of a, a global. So ACE media is a project. It's not a tag. So it's okay. you're, you're seeing when he saw it on my, you know, my main task list and it says ACE media and it looks like a tag cause they all look like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's actually a prod, a project that I have where, and I'm, I, I didn't talk about this, but I have go, I keep my like overall business goals. I have a big, I have a big business with multiple websites. So I keep all my business goals there. I keep uh, recurring tasks, like update my growth reports every month, update my budget every month, journal every day, write in my entrepreneurial journal every month, send an email for, about my meetups every month, transfer money from my business account to my personal account every month. Uh, you know, I also have all my credit card payments in there. So like whenever it's time to pay my credit card, 
you know, 10 days before it's due, it pops up in Asana and guess what? I got to pay my credit card that day. And that the ACE media project is sort of a catch all for personal and like really big picture stuff for my entire company. All right. That's a, so there you go. Uh, another question from Carlos really quickly. How do you split between tasks and subtasks? So how do you, I guess maybe it's how do you decide or. Yeah, I don't, so I don't use subtasks for myself. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm solopreneur in that sense, I don't use subtasks. I just use all tasks, main tasks, but um, I only use subtasks if one person is in charge of the task, but it requires multiple people. Mm -hmm. So in the case of the uh, editorial calendar, I have one person and it could be me. So it's, let's say it's me on roasty. Like I am the editor in chief, right? And I'm have to like squeeze my hands in the air to do air quotes. I'm the editor in chief, but I have a writer. I have a graphic designer. I may have a video guy. I may have whoever I may just have an, I may have an additional editor. Um, those people, since I'm in charge of that one task, which is the blog post itself, I am the master person in charge, but then each subtask is for a different member of my team to finish that one task. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's how I use it too. Okay. So basically the it's almost like, and this is where I think people get, I mean, I tend to use in Asana um, tasks as like projects in a lot of ways. Like they are, they're little mini projects. Little really. mini projects. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes and, yes. You're right. So if you, if you're caught in the kind of the GTD mentality of like, Oh, well, you know, but a, I mean, that's, I mean, everything could be a project if you really break it down. Right. So, um, I would say that that that's that's the way we use it too. Is that the you know ultimately, um, you know, Jim, my editor, is in charge of making sure the blog post goes up. But frankly, um, I don't consider that to be a project. I consider that to be a. Uh, I don't consider that to be a, like I, it's got to look like a much larger task. So yes. that's how I look at it. Yep. Um, all right, let's move on to the next question here really quickly. And James, I'm going to get you that iOS uh, input up. Um, yeah, uh, I can tell you, Nikki, they're not going to make an OS app for, um, for, for, um, a Mac OS app for Asana, but you can get the tool called fluid and fluid allows you to make a web-based app into a native application. So I'll look that up too. Uh, all right. Why is Asana better than to do is for managing your blog task list. Okay. So Matt, I'll let you start know. with that. I have no idea. I've yeah. never used to do this. So I'll tell you why. Um, first off. Uh, the way that Asana is laid out, it just, it's designed better for that kind of thing. Uh, Todoist is not designed in a way that I believe, this is my own personal opinion, that, um, that gears itself towards content, you know, uh, a content schedule or a content plan. That's, that's my, that's my thought on it. Um, you don't get to see the big picture as much. I love Todoist for personal stuff and I use it. Believe me, I'm a big Todoist user, but, uh, and I love using it because I can share projects with my coaching clients. That's why I use Todoist as well, because it's easy to share. Uh, I love the geo, I love the custom filters. The filters, in, in fact, a lot of times what I, I actually have a label in Todoist called Asana and a label called Trello. And it's like, what do I need to go to Asana for? Well, Asana tells me that I have to look at this stuff. And that's where, that's my dashboard for the company. Trello, the Trello label, which hopefully will go away at some point once I can convince the podcast editor we're going to move away from it. Um, that tells me, oh, here's all the audio stuff you need to do. Right. So I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with it, but I don't, it's not, the design doesn't lend itself well for content planning, whereas Asana's definitely does. I don't know, Matt, you've looked at the UI, so you could probably get a sense at least. Yeah. I mean, I also think, and this is totally, I, this is something that I consider as a person, but you know, most people don't, I hate the name to yeah. do is a dumb name. So I, I, yeah, I look at that and I, you know, obviously user interface is, is to me, to me, user interface is the most important part of a tool. Mm. I, I, there's some software that people tell me to use and I look at it for three seconds and I'm like, I will never, ever, I will never use Libsyn because of their user, user interface. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of it either. You know, I will never use uh, companies like Tailwind and Boardbuster for Pinterest because their UIs are ungodly. So I don't know. It's just a personal preference. Asana, the name Asana is, doesn't it mean like it's some sort of like yoga, yoga term? term? Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember exactly what it means offhand. But I come from the pool space. And so Asana is something that I used to sell. <laughs> so we're an Asana. Oh, yeah. 
All right. Um, I'm grabbing that link right now for, um, for, uh, and of course it's going to be, it's not an affiliate link cause I can't find it. Um, or, or I think Asana, is Asana has a different, oops, or Asana is the other. That's, I, I went to the wrong, um, that's going to be a very long Google search. Well, it'll tell you at Lifehacker what that is. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, that's, that's input. It's for iOS. I can't find it in the store. I, I'm sure it's still there. Um, all right, let's go to uh, the last. And then, of course, I'll, I'll find Fluid in here as well. Uh, let's go to the last question. Oh, we actually, oh, is Asana capable to do its replacement for combining personal and blogging? Will it get too messy? Um, I, I, it depends. Uh, it doesn't get messy for me because I know what each tool's intention is. I know that Asana is designed for company stuff and I know what it's available for in, um, you know, I know what, what, what to do is this for. So I think if you have the right intentions in mind, um, I don't think they get messy. Um, but if you don't, then yeah, I think that, that it can get a bit unwieldy. I like, I like how Matt, you put everything in Asana. I think it's, it's uh, Noel, by the way, thanks for throwing the Fluid app uh, link in there. And I can't see the input app to show up. There's another app called Drafts for iOS that you might want to look at too for Asana. Uh, I don't know, Matt, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, uh, you're not really, you've not really used it. So, I mean, it's probably, I think if you struggle with productivity tools, like my job is to look at all these things, right? Like that's my job. So it's okay for me to be in those spaces because that's what I do. Um, but if you're not, if that's not your job and it's not your job, Matt, then why? Like just be in one place. Yeah. I am so, I'm so adamant about simplification. Um, which is why I was like, Asana is going to be my tool for everything, no matter, no matter what. Right. Yeah. So that's why my CRM is in Asana. That's why our communication is in Asana. That's why my editorial calendar and my personal life, like it's why everything is there. I just had to make it work for myself. Right. Yeah. And that's it you make it work bottom line and it takes time and you do it little bits at a time. Uh, but once you get it, like I, honestly, if Asana went away, I, I'd be so, <laughs> I'd be so lost. Like I literally wouldn't know what to do every day. Yeah. I, I, um, Asana is running more and more of my stuff these days. Mm -hmm. Like it really is. And I think that in order for, I think, again, the big thing is have a framework in place, but Asana's got so much available, yeah. so much available for you to, to play with. I think I'm that, even, yeah, I'm even going to start doing social media strategy within it too. So yeah, it's like, it's, yeah. it's going to run my businesses, my, I mean, and I know people who use it, who don't own websites, you know, they, it's not, it's not, they don't have an editorial calendar. They have, they run a consulting business yeah. and you know, they keep track of their clients in there and they keep track of the work they have to do with those clients in there as two separate projects. And it's like, yeah, it totally makes sense for them. Um, I've used it for, I'm going to start using it for home brewing. So like, it's going to tell me when I have to like transfer from the primary to the secondary, when my brew days are, what ingredients I need. Like it's going all in the same big Asana system that I have because my whole life, it's my, basically it's the Ace Media Group plus Matt his life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and, and I think that and we're seeing here in the chat, like simplification, again, you can scale it. You start, I mean, you, how yeah. you started out, Matt, how we all started out, you can add more like what you're just talking about. So, um, that we're going to call it, we're going to wrap it up right now, Matt, thank you so much for joining everyone. Uh, I hope you got a lot out of this. Um, I know that, uh, there is the replay, so you're going to get a replay sent to you, but Matt, this has been great. Cool. Um, I'm glad that, uh, and again, don't forget to check out the offer. Uh, it is for, uh, again, I mean, 25 bucks, Asana for bloggers. Like why? I why, will why, never you... sell anything more than $25. Well, there you go. It's part of my rule. If, if, you, if you become a subscriber to moneylab.co and I make more stuff, you won't pay more than 25. Awesome. There you go. I, I, and again, we have similar pricing strategies too. This is great. Um, <laughs> Renee, for thanks for joining me. Renee, I, I might see you at, uh, I don't know if you're going to social media camp. I'm going to be there starting this week in Victoria, BC. I'm speaking on a panel. Uh, there's other cool news that's coming up for me, which I'm really excited about. Uh, Matt, what else, what's coming up next for you? What do you got going on other than, you know, just, you know, tricking out Asana some more? Yep. Just uh, focusing on swim university since is the season, the pool season has begun. Um, working on roasty, trying to build that up. Uh, a lot of that, it's going to be over at moneylab.co. 
I will be at W I will be in Portland during WDS. I won't be at WDS, but uh, if you're in Portland during that time, uh, just sign up for money lab and I'll hit you up with a big brewery meetup of some sort. And, uh, yeah, and you, you, we did that last year. We were at uh, base camp yep. uh, and I ended up, uh, it was when I was on my 90 day, one year, no beer challenge. And I had kombucha. The kombucha was fantastic. Yes. Kombucha is good. And I'm, and I went in reverse. I got like, stupid drunk so uh, <laughs> maybe this year i'll pace so we'll again everybody thanks so much for joining us today for another uh another uh webinar in the productivity webinar series i had a great time matt i will talk to you very soon totally thanks everybody for tuning in take care appreciate it all right bye-bye